Hey everyone, welcome back. Who's your garage? I'm Adam. Good having you with us. Hope you've been enjoying some of the videos we've been posting on all the body work. And uh, we've been hitting it pretty hard. Most of the videos have revolved around the body work, the heavy structural rebuilding of this fan. Uh, I want to take a little break from that just to you know get the monotony out. Kind of slide into another project temporarily and then we'll get back into that. One thing we're going to do here is uh, find the positions for these swivel seat bases to mount in the van. Uh, they're an aftermarket. They are the 10 inch uh, tall ones so they, they, they fit appropriately for these Dodge vans with the, the way they're engineered. But they are aftermarket so they have a very universal kind of a situation. They're, they're probably intended a little bit more for RV use where they just have a very general mounting point. But on these vans, they have different seat positions and you have to pretty much find new locations for them. And with that, uh, we wanna make the brackets properly that they go underneath the van so that you can screw these fine thread seat mount bolts in there. And in case you have a wreck or somebody really heavy or does something that kind of taxes the structure of the seat base that it doesn't rip it out of the floor, okay? And we're gonna take these nuts open this hole up a little bit more and we're going to weld it on there and then that way we'll have a nice wide swath to go in there weld it and we can run our bolt right through the floor and a lot of this positioning when you have a swivel seat uh, you want you want to be careful you don't want to just mount them in there however they look good you got to make sure that when this swivels it won't run it into this or on that side it'll run it into the steering wheel or the other side of this and then also be uh, in good alignment with everything because you have you know the steering wheel on that side you want to be able to kind of be aligned with it so we had to take all that into consideration so I'll show you what we did on that these here are something that I made and it's just the 316 stock like I showed you a second ago it's part of the same bar and I squared them up and I try to make it fit as close as possible to the holes that are on the on here uh, it's a little bit of improvisation because you had to drill some extra holes back here to compensate for the length here but side to side I just centered them up and bolted them into here and then these were able to fit on these these elongated holes in the front and then the back ones like I said I had to drill some holes in the back which is kind of what you're looking at right here okay either too far or too too little it just wasn't lining up but when we jump ahead here and see what we're really trying to do I will show you okay now here's the seat sitting on the swivel base and I talk about them being offset this one didn't really need very much offset on it per se uh, the holes still line up how we had it marked and then our hardware goes through here and just you know nut bolt and a washer all four corners here so this makes it a little bit different from the driver's side in that it swivels pretty good but we had to compromise on where to fit it in this location if you look at this hole and this one and then this one and this one these were the original seat base mounting positions for the box frame uh, originally for this fan and these holes over here are for the seat belt mounts so that's why we have all the extra holes now if you look at this this and this this is where we're going to relocate the, the seat position okay i try to avoid drilling extra holes when possible so we was able to save by using this one again and we only have to make three mounts for this side and we'll be good all right, so we're in the driver's seat position. And if you look straight down here, we've got the, the holes that held that, uh, the box base and for that seat. This one was pretty simple, just like the other side. You had the two rear mount holes, the two front mount holes, and then you had your seat belt holes over here. In this case, you had to take a little extra caution because while you could move that around a little bit, if you moved it that much on this side, you'd kind of be over here, 
or over there. And you know this wasn't going to work because he was too close to this when you swiveled it. So that was in, in effect there. Also, you don't want to move it too far back like this would have been originally and will continue to be because even when you glide your seat forward or back, you want to make sure that you're comfortable when you do drive it. I tend to like to be a little closer to the wheel where I'm not reaching towards it. Same thing down here. And with this having an armrest, you don't want to be reaching at it like this or anything and be the closest you can hold it. So I want to be comfortable. And you want to be able to slide it back a little bit to where if somebody bigger has to get in it, they can do so according. So an extra little challenge on that. What I was able to do was to use the original holes on this one. Now, if you compare to that side, it's kind of weird because most cars kind of have a similar bolt pattern and maybe even some of the vans, but this one was different on both sides. It was like these seat bases were different from this one and that one. So the seat hole or the little hill holes here were much closer to this side pattern and that's a good thing. So that allowed us to use two of these but the only thing on this one to get it to fit right is we're gonna have to hog this hole out and I already did a little bit. Just open it up just a little bit to where we can get the bolt to reach it through here and we was able to use two of the original ones so we only have to make two brackets that go up under here and fit them. So this is how I tested these. I took one of the bolts and lined it in the various holes I was testing with and I figured that this centered it up with the wheel the best. So I went ahead and tightened it down as best I could. Make sure it's centered while you're doing it or you're getting it close at least and it's not just like over here or anything. So this being tight and this being tight, it allows us to move this properly without it shaking the whole thing. And it latches when it's in the front position. This one also has a latch on um, every quarter turn. this is to work the way we want it to work there has to be a little bit of a change and let me show you what I'm talking about I have a clamp underneath here to brace it to this so it doesn't scoot around we'll get a good accurate reasoning uh, or a good accurate look at what it needs to do so I'll release the lever and I can turn it and I can turn it this way very easily and it locks, so I'll open it again, turn it around, and I start to hit right about there. Now if I want to be able to turn this all the way, I will have to move it over. Now you're thinking, well how do you get it over this far? Well, since we only have one bolt in here, when I go to turn it all the way in there, it lifts it up and it actually tilts it and then I can bring it in. If that was fastened all the way down, one, I would rub it and it's rubbing right here. And that'll eventually just tear things up and it won't look good. So if I push it back, it's dead into it. So if that thing's mounted tight to the floor, it's gonna give me a problem. It won't get in there for one. So I'll show you what I did there. Okay, now looking from the back of it, we moved it forward just a little bit enough where you can see more of the structure of this and underneath it's not too far off the center it's just enough to, to be noticeable while you're looking at it so it's not really too bad that way this here is where it's kind of important is like I said the holes are a little larger we do have to elongate this one some more so it'll stretch over here and get the hole that's right underneath there and then we have larger washers that we'll use on this anyways, just to give a good footprint. So it seems like it'll work pretty good that way. It also, when you move this forward, it keeps it from hitting the steering wheel. So you just have a little bit of room there. 
and that's pretty good. All right, so I'll show you what we got going on. You seen these pieces earlier? This three sixteenths plate, and uh, just this is just happened to be a piece of scrap that I had from the the brackets that we built for the seats. So I figured I'll just make that the standard. It's got a little bit of length on it. It'll help uh, brace underneath the floor. This one I went ahead and opened up the hole for the bolt to fit through, and I went ahead and tightened the nut down on it, and went all the way flush with it. And what I'll do when I get all these cut and ready and drilled, so I got a few more on the temple here, is that we'll take the welder, turn it up a little bit, and weld that nut in a couple places on there. At least three places, I would say, on there. going to do is clean the areas on the underbody where these pieces will go and we will make small tack welds through the floor so if the floor is sitting over top of this where the hole is we're going to drill some holes on the side of it and then spot weld it to the floor to it so this will hold it up. That way uh, we don't necessarily have to hold a nut up there while we're trying to put a bolt in or anything of that matter. It'll make it a little bit more official in that regard. So let's get to work on that and see what we can get done. All right, now we're getting into the first one here. And it takes a little bit of prep work to really get them ready to go. I cleaned it off really good and uh, took all the little beads off of it here and uh, scraped it down good. Now underneath, let me grab my flashlight here, right here. So the, if you're familiar with what I've been doing, the green is like a rust protectant. Uh, it's Eastwood frame coating. And you can see it's setting on a flange, which is part of the frame rail here, right here. And it's setting on the flange for the cross member. So I made the holes here where they will grab that flange and that flange. Otherwise, if I go to tighten it up over here or something uh, or have a hole here, there'll be a small gap where it'll take forever to fill that weld up. So I went ahead and where you take the bolt and tighten it up and make sure the piece underneath there is square and it looks decent, that when I go to fill this as well, it'll hit it spot on top of that because it's flush. And kind of a similar situation and if you have to you can use a little spacer up there and uh, on here it's hard to get to but fortunately there's a hole just enough to get my skinny hand up there and I was able to kind of clean it up and then spray some of the stuff up in there so that one's pretty much ready to go once we get the pieces but this is the first one we put on first little bracket I'm gonna adjust it a little bit just make sure it's straight and then uh We'll spot weld it and we'll continue through the rest of them that way. Okay, so we've got the seat. Uh, we got it pinned in there with the bolts. It's not tight now, it's loose. But the, the base is on the floor. We've got all the brackets welded underneath. There's so many different dimensions and you know directions with this you go. It gets close enough to the side of the van to where you can use the armrest. You'll have that security feeling next to it if you need to feel that way, but you have enough space um, to where when this thing spins, it'll be in, in a pretty good uh, position. The other variables are the, uh, the, the fore and aft on the seat where you can adjust it. You know, That is something that helps in this quite a bit because when you go to fling this thing around it needs to be a little forward that way this back part the way it juts out away from the center it won't smack into that it's still pretty 
pretty stiff, so you gotta give it a second. So see it hits right there. Now if I return it, bring the seat forward and you disengage the swivel latch. I can completely go 180 on it and I haven't touched it over here. And uh, that's pretty cool. So I like that. Next we're going to do the driver's side over here and get that under control and then we'll show you that one on the swivel. Okay, now we'll take a quick look at this. Uh, if you paying pay attention earlier, you know, so we was able to reuse this hole and this hole here so we didn't have to drill any extra holes and make a mount for that but we did have to do them here and here and you can see right here I just went and buffed them down but got a couple spot welds spot welds and um, this side here I had to cut a little notch in it because it was actually running into the, the little boss that holds this one in so I just put a little L cut in it and it fit up in there really nice, right up, up against the floor pan. It's right next to the frame, the, the heavy frame rail that goes down through here. And it's a little bit of a similar case here. The frame rail flange runs here, and this was able to kind of clock against it. But I made sure they was all parallel with the length of the vehicle. So this one should be ready to mount up the seat. Now I moved the driver's seat forward a little bit and I didn't have to go too much and amazingly when I started positioning these like at the beginning of this video I thought that I'd have to really move them side to side on top of the, the swivel seat base but it looks like I really didn't it was more just a matter of where to position the bases and then the fact that you can slide the seat far enough forward or back depending on which way you're going that it will avoid hitting this hitting the steering wheel or hitting the other post over there so it worked out really well so you can center these seats on top of the bases now the difference on from this one to that one is I did have to move that one forward like I just said and if you look here there's an elongated hole in the front where I ran the bracket that runs across here so we did these pieces here and then the width of the seat where it bolts in comes out to out here roughly there's one here and there's one across the back side just like that now on the passenger side I did have to drill holes that were a little bit closer than this okay because of the the pattern on the bottom of the actual seat was not as far away as this so I had to bring it up a little bit and then ran this across and we got our holes in there okay now on the driver's seat I had to come as far forward as possible and drill another hole even further this way which comes about to where this little flange under here kind of ends actually one of them fell right about here and same thing over there so that way it brought the whole seat assembly forward a little bit more uh, because it needed that just that little bit of difference where it was mounted to the floor in relation so that when you did swivel it didn't hit the side post or the steering wheel and it allowed you to center it with the with the center line of the steering wheel okay so this is the exact base is what's in there and like you saw at the beginning they swivel completely around and I'll show you the difference on this one so here we are even if you look at the ribs here if you use this as your center point there you go so actually we got it a little bit over this way which I think is pretty good because it puts you closer to the door that is imaginary at the moment and so we have our lever down here pull it back swivel it around if you look here so we missed the back and then we get right there 
and I believe I'm as far forward as we can go. Yeah, pretty much. But if you go back on it, then you can go complete 180 like that. Now the door armrest on the imaginary door will hit about here, so that might be as far as it'll go anyways. Even if you were out a little bit more, it would hit that because of the depth of it. On these particular seats, which they are Dodge seats, Ram Charger, 70s and 80s van, is that you have the armrest, right? And notice how these seats look identical, except for the where the armrests are mounted. Well, it is true. There is a, you could feel it right there. There's another boss there and you can feel the holes in it for another one of these assemblies. And I've seen people get another one of those and mount one here and another one of these and mount it there. And then they will remove the door armrest. And then they will completely ro rotate around without hitting anything. Uh, I'm sure there's other options, variations that you may have or on your particular van if you're doing something like this and somebody also asked me well can i put these in a car uh you probably can these bases come in different heights this is a 10 inch i've seen four inch and six inch likely in a car you'd need as low as possible um i haven't seen anything any lower i would imagine in most cars two inch would be about as high as you'd want to go maybe three at some point we'll get them reupholstered and it'll all look very natural in here. So if you are doing this swap or you want to do this swap or you're looking into it, I didn't see too many videos here on YouTube about this, uh, particularly in the old vans where it seems like it was really common, uh, customization feature. Uh, just send me, you know, or leave a comment. Uh, I'll try to help you out. The name of these bases, I believe are ProGuard and I will put it down in the description. eBay, Amazon, and you can buy them, I believe about $98, and with that's usually with free shipping. So I bought one of them brand new, and then the other two I actually found uh, not quite used, but they was bought and they was stored, and for the pair it was like $125, and the shipping was like 25 which was really good shipping price considering how hefty they are they're pretty sturdy and so I got a good deal on those but don't pay over a hundred for each because I've seen them out there for that price and you can easily find them for 98 and down so again any questions just post them I'll try to get with you on it oh yeah one more thing I wanted to add I didn't really want to add it in a different video I want to just try to cover everything here but we'll, we'll see what we can do later these are the bases that come under this style seat typically in the Dodge vans, not the Ram Chargers because they set more directly on the floor. But this style base is more sculpted and a lot of these had a different swivel base that went underneath the bottom. Uh, they don't seem to be very common. One benefit to them though is their streamlined look. And another thing here, the holes, these are for seat belt. Uh, assemblies so if you see some of these you'll see they look very streamlined they look very good and you're thinking well it'd be cool if you can have that on here and be a swivel base but I can't find the old style swivels what I'm going to experiment with is see if this will fit underneath here and still be able to use the swivel feature I don't see how it couldn't but there might be need some modification whether it be in this part here, maybe we have to cut out a little bit more. Or remove part of this seat belt rail here that is built into the RV base. They have a, a threaded hole on the end, and that would interfere with this. But if you have seat belt mechanisms here, then this wouldn't necessarily be required. So we'll see if we can fit it up around there, you know, get all this sandblasted and painted, all that sort of business. And if we could fit it up around there and still swivel, it'd be great. One thing that made me think that was these are a nine inch tall base and these are 10. So that would leave you a little bit of a hover down here where it wouldn't hit anything. 
if you had a, a shag carpet or any kind of carpet, it might come up right underneath it and it would look pretty flush. So we'll see what we can do with that in the future. And again, if you like what you're seeing on this channel, I'd like to ask you if you can subscribe and hit the little bell. That way you'll get notifications when we post something new. And stay tuned for the next update.